When I first got into FPV a few months ago, I wanted an aircraft that had a collapsible airframe, predictable and docile flight characteristics, a large internal capacity, and a good payload. I developed some scratch building techniques using ordinary foam board from the Dollar Tree that allowed inexpensive construction of this aircraft I call the Peace Drone you see here. So far it's working great and I'd like to share a few details in case other guys would like to build one for themselves. Well, Here is the Peace Drone version 2 in its broken down state. We have the main wing which is folded, the canard wing which is solid wing, no control surface, and then standard Armin wing airfoil, and the main fuselage which is 30 inches long and the payload or camera pod which is 15 inches long. It is assembled like this. So the main wing are two identical airfoils in a mirror image that are hinged in the center here by a piece of tape and held together by small rare earth magnets thusly. The wing is unfolded like this. The carbon fiber rod is removed from one side and then used to push the other carbon fibers spar into position like that so that it lies in approximately this position in the wing and holds it nice and stiff and unitary wing. And the vertical stabilizers are Depron and are held in place by a little rare earth magnet embedded in tape that engages another rare earth magnet in the wing itself. Now here I have the main fuselage and for my current FPV setup I have a little one third inch Sony CCD board camera. So we just plug this in with a coupler. Slide that together, little pieces of tape for retaining it, and that holds the camera in place. The canard is affixed here. With rubber bands. I typically use six rubber bands here, and then the main wing is affixed by, in this particular electric setup, I've got it down to a single connection, which connects the receiver and all the electronics in the wing to the BEC in the fuselage. So that's one connection. And I usually put about 10 rubber bands for the main wing, but otherwise that's ready to go. The total length in this instance is 45 inches. Each of the main wings is 30 inches long for a total wingspan of 60 inches. The canard wing is also 30 inches. The canard wing cord is six inches and there is no control surface. This is just a solid arm and wing airfoil. The main wing cord is seven inches which includes a one and a half inch control surface that is full span from wing tip to just inboard of the fuselage there. I'm using EXI servos. They're 19 grams digital metal gear buried flush in the wing with the gift card uh, control arm trick. And so with the space in between the wing provided 
by the vertical stabilizers it separates the wings just enough to allow clearance of the servo arms and the control horns and also note that they're about a centimeter apart so they don't hit each other directly when the wing is folded up. The exterior width of the fuselage is three and a half inches and that is the same from the nose to the rear and the interior diameter of the fuselage is three inches. Here's the one of the two vertical stabilizers. This is six inch cord by eight inch height. It's made of Depron just because it's light and rigid although foam board works fine. So this piece of tape has a rare earth magnet one by one centimeter embedded in it and passes through the vertical stabilizer and wraps around the other side and then embedded into the surface of the wing itself is, is the same size rare earth magnet recessed about the same thickness as the rare earth magnet that engages it and so when this is flipped up it just holds it in place. This is pretty strong but I have under aggressive maneuvering had this momentarily pop out and pop back in place so if you choose to use this method I would recommend a little safety tape or stronger magnets and that's not going to come out whatsoever. Now if you see my fuselage making video the interval of paper that is left on the inside of each of these walls is seven centimeters or two and three quarter inches and that yields a total inter internal diameter of three inches by three inches which is perfect for a GoPro still in the case or when used with a board camera like this one it leaves plenty of space around here for cooling air same with the GoPro not quite as much but also the transmitter can fit beside the camera in the instance of the GoPro I've created a little hatch where I can put the transmitter inside including the antenna in the case of a 5.8 gigahertz I've used a cloverleaf antenna that fits entirely within the fuselage so I've made this payload nose section 15 inches long which is really ample space for camera, transmitter, OSD, any other payload you want. You can also make one 30 inch long section which is the same as the 30 inch fuselage there and then just cut it in half and leave, leave yourself a spare nose section for different setups. Here you can see the space inside the nose section with the GoPro up in the front and about 12 inches of free space behind that. There you can see the cloverleaf circular polarized antenna that I've built with the help of uh, RC Explorer and IB Crazy. Works really exceptionally well. It's pretty easy to make too. Here's a profile of the airfoil that I've gotten out of the arm and wing construction technique for the canard which is just fixed and if you've seen my earlier video where I previously had elevators here it works quite well without those elevators, instead using elevons on the main wing. Here's a look inside the main hatch where it can fit up to four 2200 milliamp hour recell packs. Two is side by side there and an additional two back here and I've successfully carried four with no parent problem. Here's the main power takeoff bus that goes to a speed controller which is right under here. A UBEC which is right under here. I have a voltage smoothing capacitor that goes to the 12 volt uh, line that supplies the FPV gear and the camera up in the nose. The center of gravity falls right here which is 15 inches from the rear of the fuselage and 15 inches from the very front of the fuselage there which is nice so I can put batteries right at the CG without really affecting the balance of the plane with any given payload. Here's a little cooling air scoop for the speed controller inside. This is an 1100 kV 70 gram approximately 250 watt outrunner with the metal motor mount here of titanium. A little cooling scoop that sticks out the side even though there's a, quite a bit of air that blows from the front of the fuselage back I decided I'd like to direct a little air directly onto the motor right there. 
This is a 10 by 4.5 prop, and I would recommend this size or maybe even a 12 inch uh, for efficiency and for quietness of operation. I have both the main wing and the canard held on with the old fashioned carbon fiber rods and rubber bands. There are probably more elegant solutions to that, but this works well. It's low tech, it's pretty reliable. This is just some self adhesive uh, foam weather stripping just to give the wing a little grippiness when it's mounted in place. I've chosen this placement of the receiver because it is widely separated from the power plant, from the batteries, from the FPV antenna and gear up there. So it's cleanly located out on the wing. And I've placed the satellite even further out on the wing in a different antenna orientation. So there should be no interference. The drawbacks of this are that there's more wiring inside this wing. Um, but one plus is there's only one connection of the electronics in the wing with the power system inside the fuselage itself. Here's a comparison with the new piece drone with a 3 inch internal diameter and the original with a 2 inch internal diameter. This fuselage is actually just fine for casual use and if you're limited to a small board camera or no payload at all. Um, it's very light and strong. I've continued the practice of mounting the canard wing with the leading edge elevated one thickness of foam board over the trailing edge and this gives about a 2.5 degree increased angle of incidence for the canard surface itself relative to the main wing and this gives very good static stability in pitch and it makes the airplane climb or descend more relative to the throttle and less to do with the elevator so you can usually just trim in the elevator and, and then uh, let the power govern your climb and descend behavior. The greater this angle is increased the more the plane responds to the throttle as far as pitch goes and the more this is decreased down to the point where the canard is flat and parallel with the main wing and fuselage it actually responds by just going faster and slower in response to throttle inputs and the elevator then becomes the main pitch mechanism. Currently I hand launch and just land on grass so this so just put a little piece of duct tape there for abrasion resistance and build up the nerve to catch it in hand or you could easily put landing gear, probably put tricycle gear with a couple of main gear under the wing at, at about this level and then a nose gear or two maybe under the canard itself. Now here's the transition between the nose uh, payload pod and the fuselage proper and I use the leading edge of the canard pretty close to the very front of the fuselage. Uh, there's one inch here, the canard starts and ends at seven inches aft of the fuselage. And then the main wing I have mounted just a little bit forward of the rear of the fuselage. And so that's another six inches or so up to there. So essentially mount the main wing as far back as you can without interfering with the prop and the canard as far forward on the fuselage tube as you can still maintaining some structural integrity in the tube itself. I would welcome any questions or comments or improvements on this and it would be great to see a few more of these flying.